said you're going to be able to figure out the accumulators if they need to be replaced, right? That's right. I already know that you need them. <laughs> okay, so now I know it's not supposed to be this raw. No, no, no. Accumulators actually cost so McLaren 650S. And let's type in accumulators. Four of them. Damn! Seventeen hundred and forty-eight dollars, not including tax and shipping. What the hell? That is way too much for my budget renovation of my McLaren 650S. $2,000 for just the parts, not including labor if I didn't do it myself. What the hell? All right, so many of you watching may not know what an accumulator is. Instead of somebody, a newbie like me, trying to explain it, I'm gonna let my friend Miguel drop some knowledge on you on the whiteboard and tell you everything you need to know about what an accumulator is. Take it away, Miguel. What an, is an accumulator? Well, think in a air balloon inserted in a bucket and just apply a force in this balloon. So you increase the pressure on the air side of the balloon. This is the basic principle of an accumulator. You have an accumulator with a hard shell, normally carbon steel, very similar to the bucket that I showed you before. And you have a, an elastomeric diaphragm. And this elastomeric diaphragm will make a barrier to a uh, precharged nitrogen session. You can compare the precharged nitrogen with the air that you have in your balloon. This port is connected to the hydraulic system. So the hydraulic system will apply pressure in the, this portion and will be translated on the same action that you have with this force. So basically when you have the hydraulic system, you increase the pressure in the nitrogen area. Now that we know what an accumulator is, let me show you where the front and rear accumulators on the McLaren 650S are located. Both the front and rear accumulators are located at the top of the shocks, located at the top of each wheel well. Now you're probably wondering, how the heck do you know whether or not you need to replace your accumulators? Especially if you have, don't have someone like Kevin from Supercar Garage Atlanta McMedics telling you that you need to replace them. On a newer, uh, whether it's a Super Series or Ultimate Series, what you'll actually do is most likely other than feeling a, 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 an increasedness of stiffness in no matter what handling mode you're in, you'll most likely get a suspension fault or PCC fault on your dash, which is most likely an indicator that you need to do it. Now, if you have an older series, a super series car like I do, whether it's a MP412C or 650S, you're really gonna have to listen to your butt dyno and check the stiffness and whether there's change between the different modes. So if you're driving on your favorite road and some, you know a road that you really know and uh, you go in normal mode, and then you do the same drive in, say, track mode, you want there to be a vast difference. Because if you only go to sport mode, it's just gonna be a very slight difference in feel uh, in the, uh, the handling. So drive on that road multiple times, go to normal, then move over to the track, and then you'll be able to tell whether there's a difference. Now, it's not gonna tell you whether you need to replace all four, but uh, it's gonna be a good indication that you do need to replace them, especially if you feel no change and it's completely harsh and it's a complete uh, hard ride. Normal, move to track. And then back to normal, and then back to track. Now, as you guys probably saw from the tile and thumbnail, I did not spend $2,000 on new accumulators for my McLaren 650S. I decided to take a gamble. And like many of you out there who are building your project cars or renovating your cars, you end up going on eBay looking for options or things that you can do at a discount. So as I was perusing one day, I stumbled across a, an ad that said, you know, used 720S accumulators. And for those many of you that may not know, the 650S as well as the 720 use the same uh, accumulators. So they're interchangeable. So this person had an ad for three good accumulators. So you're probably wondering, what am I gonna do with three out of four accumulators? Well, um, that's the gamble. So for $399, I was able to buy three good accumulators from a 2021 McLaren 720S that only had 3,500 miles when it crashed. So what we're gonna end up doing is, 
I'm going to show you how you can tell whether an accumulator is bad or good while they're off of the vehicle. And then we're going to swap out the accumulators and basically pray that one of my four is still good. That way, at the end of this video, we have four good accumulators on my McLaren 650S and we improve the overall ride quality. And hopefully, it's as good as everybody says because I've only driven a McLaren, apparently, with bad accumulators. Instead of me telling you how to check your accumulators once they're off the vehicle, I thought it would be best to have Kevin from Supercar Garage Atlanta McMedic show us how to do it. So let's head out to Kennesaw, Georgia to the Supercar Garage Atlanta shop and have Kevin show us how to check our accumulators. Hey Craig, I know you have some questions about how to really measure a failed accumulator. So there are a couple of different failures. You can have accumulators completely failed or one that's on its way out. One that's completely failed, you're absolutely going to be able to drop a solid object something that you can put some pressure on all the way to the bottom. But sometimes accumulators are partially failed. They've lost some of their nitrogen, but you still can't push them all the way down. And so you'll definitely notice a difference in ride quality, although they're not all the way failed. So I haven't tested these yet, but we just took them off of a 12C. Operates the same way as the 720S and the 650. So as I drop this one in, obviously I'm displacing fluid. It's all the way to the bottom. This is a completely failed unit, not partially failed. And if you think about that, if this was long enough, it would actually go a little deeper. I'm limited by the depth of this punch. So this one's done, put it to the side. Again, this car was riding very rough. This one's completely done. This one is completely done. And I imagine this one as well. Yeah, these are all completely done. There's many times that we've measured these I don't have any in the shop at the moment because we throw them away as soon as we take them off. Plenty of times that we measure these and we can we can actually rest this on top of the bladder, but if you give it a firm push, you can displace it yourself. It'll be partially um, collapsed. These operate on a very high pressure. This one says 60 bar of pressure. I think seven and a half is bar is about where the car can start changing this. And also, when you're rotating that knob on your active panel, you're increasing the line pressure or decreasing the line pressure that these are going to work off of. In short, you may find it very difficult, even though one's partially failed, to be able to push it all the way down by hand. We just don't have that much strength. At least I don't. We just grabbed a new accumulator off the shelf as a comparison. We can see the gas is pre-charged to 7.5 bar. That's over 100 PSI. If you look inside the accumulator, we can actually see the diaphragm. It's red color. And we're going to take our solid object, we're going to mash down on this. I, I can partially move this. I'm getting a little bit of spring action right there. But if I push any harder, I'm, I'm feeling so much pressure on the palm of my hand, it's discomforting. This is a brand new accumulator. You'll find some accumulators after you do this hundreds of times that you can, as we're pushing, we'll actually be able to depress it, but it will still come back up to the full top position. You can drop a solid object into the accumulator and it should only go up a little less than an inch in internally because the diaphragm, which is red inside, is fully charged with nitrogen. A new accumulator, as a human, with just the pressure hand, you're gonna have a hard time compressing that to uh, anything more than just a small amount because of the, the, the 7.5 bar charge inside this accumulator. This actual vessel is designed to hold 80 bar of pressure without bursting. So that accumulator is designed to completely collapse inside with fluid holding it uh, in a pressure position and then be able to rebound thousands and thousands of times. This is a fully destroyed accumulator. This one just came off of a 12C. This one's gonna be internally the same design and concept, just in a, it's in a different house in a different manufacturer. The newer accumulator has a little larger opening than the older one. We're gonna be able to drop this all the way to the bottom because now we're bottoming out. Normally I can drop this all the way to the bottom. It's, it's hitting some interference, but, so basically this is a completely destroyed accumulator. It's gonna go to the bottom. This is a brand new one. You'll have accumulators that You'll drop this in and it'll it'll physically sit like this. But when you start to apply pressure, you'll be able to compress it by hand without 
without punching through your hand. And you see I put some enough pressure five minutes ago that I left a mark on my hand, right? <laughs> so before we get too far in the video, uh, if you think this was a bad idea, I want to hear your comments down below. If you think this was an ingenious idea, basically instead of spending $2,000, spending $400 on three good ones and hoping and gambling on one of the four that you have on your McLaren still being good. So please wish me luck. Put some comments down below whether this was a good or bad idea. And uh, we're going to jump into the replacement. All right. If you don't know, uh, this is where your power steering reservoir is on your McLaren, uh, MP412C, 650S, uh, 675 LT, any P11 chassis car. So the hydraulic system is also the same system uh, that goes for your power steering. So the fluid is actually your power steering fluid. And so what you want to first do is you want to basically check the level of your power steering fluid. Uh, basically take off this reservoir, make sure that you've got a good level of fluid. After we're done with this, we may end up having to add a little bit of fluid, uh, but just so as the air bubbles come out, we'll leave the cap to our power steering reservoir off. Uh, we're gonna put some rags and some stuff around it to make sure uh, that if any of it leaks, it doesn't leak all over the place. And the, really the reason for that is, is because power steering fluid is very corrosive. It's caustic, it's, it's really can take away paint. It can basically, you know, really mess up with the things that it touches. So we're gonna be very, very careful here cover this all up, make sure that none of it comes out and gets onto the car or gets onto anything in our wheel well, such as our calipers. Let me show you what power steering fluid you use with your McLaren. So you actually don't need much power steering fluid. This is a Pentosin CHF202. Uh, this is what McLaren uh, recommends for the McLaren 650S. So I literally just bought one liter on Amazon just in case. Now we may need a, uh, a quart, we may need a half a quart, uh, depends on how much we lose uh, as we take off and replace the accumulators. Uh, from what I've seen online, we're not going to lose very much. We shouldn't need very much. But in case you're wondering what power steering fluid, hydraulic fluid the system uses, again, it's Pentosin CHF202. So some of you may have seen me do this in a previous video. It's something that I learned a long time ago, uh, especially for basically putting a rag or something around, call it a fill or something like that. So basically take an exact knife, take a good or an old shop towel, just cut a little hole in it. And basically what we're going to do, we're basically going to make that hole just big enough to go around the power steering, steering fill hole. That way it fits nice and snug and we have the shop towel all the way around uh, in case any of that power steering fluid does drip back out. And that's what it's going to look like when it's all done. So for those of you that follow me on Instagram, you may know that I just got the calipers repainted so I really want to protect those. So if you want behind the scenes or kind of before they happen and before they hit YouTube, Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Midlife Crisis. So we're going to basically take just some standard trash bags. We're going to wrap our carbon ceramic and the caliper and just basically make sure that they are completely covered. That way, if any of that uh, power steering fluid does were to spew out, it's not going to hit uh, that paint and uh, tear it up because I don't want to redo that. And cover the back one as well. So I don't even know if this next step is even necessary. I saw this on a video uh, for 720S and since I have diag code, I figured I'd give it a shot and see if it's an available option. Again, I don't know if it's even necessary. So we're gonna go into the PCCU, uh, look at the APMU module and put it into maintenance mode and see if it releases some of that pressure uh, from the system just to make it a little bit safer before we remove the accumulator. So if you know that this is a good step or not a good step uh, for the McLaren 650S, it doesn't seem like it's a necessary step based upon the other videos of people that I saw replacing their accumulators. But I figured we're gonna give it a shot. Uh, if it makes it a little bit safer, then we'll give, we'll give it a go. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the power train and chassis control module. We're gonna go to guided functions and we're gonna go to APMU maintenance start. All right, preconditions, battery charge is on, ignition on, engine is off, which we're there. Uh, use an oil syringe, remove as much power steering fluid to the level of the baffle before we start. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we're gonna do what the Diag code says. We're going to remove enough power steering fluid to get it below the baffle, which is basically the screen uh, that's in your uh, power steering reservoir. So I'm just gonna use this turkey base here. There's not very much that we need to pull out. Let's see if the APMU maintenance start actually lowers the pressure. All right, we've got all the conditions met. We're gonna go ahead and hit start. 
Session started, performing, waiting for 30 seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Operation successful. Proceed with caution when disconnecting the hydraulic system components. Some component failures uh, cannot be detected. This would leave the system pressurized. Like I said, guys, I don't know if I did anything or not, but I don't see that anything was hurt. So let's go in there and start replacing the accumulators. It was pretty much anticlimactic at the computer, but as you can see from the reservoir, some of that pressure did come out uh, and it spilled over onto the rag. Uh, we're basically at the top now, so we're gonna drain a little bit of that just so that we're not dealing with a situation where we're, we have it still overfilling. So let's get that cleaned up. All right, let's get this all drained a little bit more. Ah. This is not the way to do it. All right, as you guys might have saw in the last video when we were having to drain some of that excess transmission fluid, we're gonna use this, uh, my uh, suction, what you might call it, for getting out this excess power steering fluid before we start the accumulator replacement. steering fluid and uh, transmission fluid mixed together. We'll not be going back in the car. All right, that makes me feel a little bit safer <laughs> now that it's not at the top. Okay, we're gonna start with the front passenger. I've got the bags, I've got gloves on, I've got glasses. And what you're gonna need for this is a 19 millimeter wrench. And that's gonna go right at the top of the accumulator. Now I have no idea how tight this is. We are gonna find out together. Should have a little bit of fluid leak. That's to be expected. Barely any. Clean up down there. And let's get our new accumulator. All right, get our known good accumulator. All right, got a hand tight. Let's wipe it around. And let's give it a couple uh, twists with the uh, old ratchet. All right, nice and tight. And our first accumulator is complete. Let's go see if uh, the one we replaced is any good. All right, so this is the one we just took off the front. We're gonna use this punch to check if the diaphragm is collapsed. It doesn't look like the diaphragm is collapsed fully, but as Kevin said, let's try to put some pressure on it. And I definitely can move it pretty easily. So it's, it's like it's not fully collapsed, but on its way out. Let's see if we can get any fluid to come out with some compressed air. Oh yeah. So I think this one is partially collapsed. Uh, wasn't completely gone, but it was definitely on its way out. So replacing it was a good thing. All right, let me break it. Again, we're using a 19 millimeter. We're gonna twist it off. Yeah, a little bit of leakage. All right. Let's see, see if it's collapsed. All right, I'm gonna take the punch and I'm gonna go ahead and press down. Pretty hard still. This might be a, this might be a winner. This might be a good one. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and replace it with the new one. No, nope, no fluid seems to be coming out. So we're gonna save this one just in case this is our one good one as we get around to the driver's side. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this one replaced, put the new one on, and uh, we'll save this one to the side and see we this is the one we reuse. All right, let's get our new one on. All right, got it hand tight. Take our 19 millimeter and snug it up. All right, got it tight. Clean up any excess power steering fluid. Let's go check out the driver's side. All right, we're gonna get the uh, driver's rear. Ah. Got it unsnugged. Got my towel ready just in case we get some power steering fluid coming out. Yeah, this one doesn't have very much fluid coming out at all. Clean it off, let's get it tested. All right, let's check it with a punch. Oh yeah, look at all that fluid coming out. <laughs> it's just, it's like a its like a trampoline. It is definitely really, really loose. So it's not completely collapsed, but as Kevin said, uh, it's this one is definitely on its way out. So fluid was trapped behind the diaphragm. Yeah, and you, and you start seeing all that fluid come out. So this is definitely bad. All right, let's get the new one on. Now, as we come upon the last wheel, 
we've already replaced the three good ones that I bought on eBay. So now on this last one, if it's bad, we're going to have to use the best available out of the four that I had and see if I still need to buy uh, one from Kevin from Supercar Garage Atlanta. We definitely needed to get these replaced. They weren't all completely collapsed, but they were all basically had collapsed and nitrogen was out. And they definitely were not in the right condition. On to the driver's front. All right, so we've already replaced three. This is the last one. So if this one is bad, we're gonna have to pick the best out of the four that I replaced and put it back on. Now, if this one is truly bad, uh, we'll still order another one from Supercar Garage Atlanta to make sure we have four good accumulators all around. But let's go ahead and see if this one's bad. Now, not really any fluid. Clean it off. All right, here is our test. That's pretty hard. Yeah, I think I think this is good. We may have lucked out. I mean, it's a, it's a little soft, but it's not bad at all. I'm running out of air. Nothing's coming out. I think this is gonna be probably the best of our available, some everything that I've tested. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back on, and then we're gonna go take this thing for a test drive and see if we even feel a difference. Got it in there, let's get it threaded. Let's get it tightened back up. All right, nice and tight. Let's get the APMU uh, and top off the uh, power steering fluid. Take it for a drive. Since we use the guided function for the APMU maintenance start, we now gotta tell it it's finished and let it repressurize the system. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. It says batteries on a charger, ignition on, engine off, fluid level, top up as required, and start engine. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get the car started, but we're also going to uh, basically take the steering wheel, go lock to lock, you know, between five to 10 times. Make sure that it, all that fluid that's in there is getting sucked up within the system, and then we'll top off the system before we go ahead and do the finish out uh, the APMU uh, maintenance finish. So let's get the car started. one more time and it's a little low so we're gonna top it off and we barely need any fluid just to top it off just a little bit there we go all topped off here's our test drive we got it in normal and handling mode I can already tell you that I feel a lot more stable. That's the first sensation that I can feel. I feel more balanced. It definitely does not feel as harsh as before. That is definitely something different. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it into track mode, just on handling. Here we go. Wow, I can feel more of the road, but it's still a lot better. And it's, the handling is better. The dead handling is definitely better. I feel more connected. So it looks like our $399 gamble and experiment uh, worked out because this is definitely different. Woo! All right, I'm gonna put it back into normal again on the fly. I'm ready for a Sunday drive. Absolutely killer. Well, as you can see, it looks like we made a difference. The combination of the three new accumulators plus the best one available that I had left on my vehicle the ride quality is absolutely different between normal and track. Uh, handling is better, it's sharper, it's more crisp. So, do I recommend that you do the gamble that I do? Not necessarily. Uh, if you can afford it and you can do brand new accumulators, it definitely makes a difference. It's not that hard as you guys can see. 
It's something, something you definitely can do for yourself. I want to thank Kevin for showing us how to really tell whether the accumulators are good or bad. And as always, if you like this video and you like McLaren content, give this video a big thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel. And as always, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.